Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of this um, exploration on the teachings of Isa and the theme, lesson theme of the emotions. And in that first video, part one, I was talking about the four books I was reading, have been rereading, re and in the, the the work of this man, um, uh, what was his name, Bob Frissell, uh, you know, he was talking about the teachings of Junvalo Melchizedek. And Junvalo is famous for writing a book called um, The Flower of Life, I think this part one and two. And I discovered this book um, probably when I was doing my final year of my degree in Chinese medicine back in 2013. And at that phase in my life, I was doing a lot of Qigong, a lot of Tai Chi. I was a full-time TCM student. I was living and breathing this world. And I'd also done my first ever Vipassana 10 days silent retreat in New Zealand. And in that Vipassana, I basically gained control over every single cell of my body from different levels of consciousness. So by the time I, I encountered this book, I was pretty high vibes, you could say. And I remember being at my family lake house. Um, and, you know, when I was a student, I would go down there by myself for two weeks and I would do all my assignments in the, the school holidays. And that would be my, my time out by myself. And um, I had this part of this teaching which he teaches about the Merkava. He's teaching about the Merkava activation and how to do it with mudra and breathing. And... I thought I'd give it a go, but I hadn't really read the whole book. I just, you know, often with these practices, I'm sure everyone has this similar scenario playing out that you just want to do the do the um, the fun part. You don't want to do the due diligence to get to the understanding of what you're actually doing. So, luckily, smart man, he says that um, he's not teaching the final part of the um, 17 step process because he doesn't want to be responsible for what people could potentially do to themselves and he just advises that it's up to your higher self to let you know if, if you're going to be able to do that part or not um, and you'll know if you're ready or not because this is all this Merkava um, spirit light body um, also known as the chariot uh, in Kabbalism and then the chariot was also known as the joining of the Ren and the Du which is the microcosmic orbit meridians and so you know in my naivety <laughs> I thought I'd give it a go and um, I did the mudras and I sat there cross-legged and I did the, you know, the spinning of the two tetrahedrons, the masculine one and the feminine one, and I l literally did start to feel like this warm, warm, warm kind of vortexing energy happening, and I did feel almost like I, my sitting up straight person started getting magnetically attracted to the ground, and I was almost hovering nose to floor in this magnetic pull of you know, obviously it was an imbalanced energy, so it was dragging my nose down to the floor. Um, or maybe I wanted to go in that direction to the south, I don't know. Um, but I realized that this did hold very significant power, and I also knew I didn't even want to bother asking my higher self at that point, because I already had the answer, which was I'm not going to pursue this any further, because um, I did start to feel a bit nauseous as well. Um, and I've never done it since, to be honest. You know, I've been doing this sacred secretion using the microcosmic orbit. Um, but I think, you know, to be honest, that leads into that. 
that is a build up to get there. Um, so anyway, in that same year of 2013, I had a dream around the solstice of December, which would have been after this. And in my dream, I was initiated as priest. I was female, the only female on the team of four. And that was me. And that was what I call priest one, two, and three. And this was all done or led or initiated by a tall white being who has come to me many times in dreams and visions, who I always assume to be um, like an aspect of my higher self. And I won't tell the whole dream because I'm saving that for a book that is half written that goes into all of the fantastic drama detail because it's fascinating how, how it all kind of relates. But um, in this underground, we were initiated by a white tall being that I recognize as my higher self in underground tunnels. And there was a lot of Freemasonry symbolism happening. There was an acacia twig, there was the Merkava, <laughs> literally. Um, and there was um, something that Junvalo talks about in his work uh, on the path of the initiate, which is finding when you have to go into this room and choose these objects, is finding a, a version of yourself. And I found this version of myself. Um, so when I reread his work and linked it back through the stream, I'm like, ah, okay, I get it. Okay, okay I think that, that kind of resonates. Anyway, so this dream, you know, it sat with me as a very powerful, vivid dream. And I wrote it down in my dream journal. And I knew this person already. This person appeared in my life. The first time he appeared in my life, I really didn't like him. And then the second time he appeared in my life, because I was in a state of grief after my mother died, I decided that I did like him. And it wasn't very <laughs> good for me, but it was something that just had to happen. Um, in terms of what it now means as the past life uh, dynamic. And this person had a tattoo of the Eye of Horus on the back of his neck. And when I saw him in my dream, he looked back at me very mischievously, very naughty, trickster kind of energy that this person has always had. Um, and so I already knew him at, at that point. He was already my past. Um, and then, in 2016, I ended up meeting this one, which is an equally psychically interfery, um, spiritual training um, that, that was kind of devastating. And I must say as well, like in terms of that, you know, raising to a great height and falling, um, when I met him, my life fell apart, when I met him, my life fell apart. Um, and then in, in the year 2018, this is the really interesting one. I went to a um, pyramid conference in Bosnia. First and ever only Bosnian pyramid energy conference. And I met this, this person, but he was not on the conference. He was actually a random stranger in the street and he lived in the local town. And I was fascinated with him and I told him my memories about coming to Earth in a spaceship. I'm not gonna talk about that on this video. Um, and he was fascinated with me and he wanted to know about what I knew about electromagnetic energy and I told him about the meridian system of the body and it's sort of AC, DC um, ways of energy flow and he seems to agree. And he said that you really do know what you're talking about. And I said, I know. And then uh, 
he left and then I felt like I'd fallen in love with this person. It was very strange. And so anyway, I saw him the next day walking in the street and we felt very familiar and the lady I was with um, thought it was weird. <laughs> and then I saw him again a few days later and it was like, it was like remembering a, an old friend, like a brother or something. And the, pe the people I was with on the conference were like, how do you know this person? He is not on the conference. Who is this random person? And anyway, on the Saturday, everyone left the conference. No, was it this? no, this conference finished on the Saturday night. By Sunday, everyone was leaving. And I had booked myself in for um, an extra week. Um, so I could explore the underground tunnels of Ravne and just do, do my own journey, right? And so I said goodbye to all of my friends and I went out for the day. I think I went back to the Ravne tunnels. And then as I was walking back home to my home was actually a Franciscan monastery um, where the two rivers joined. I said in my mind as I was crossing, just approaching the bridge, crossing the bridge, and I said in my mind, boy, meet me under the tree in five minutes. And then I walked and I went to the tree that was opposite the monastery and there was a park bench and he was sat waiting for me. And I said, oh good, you got the message. And he said, yeah. And I sat down and he was sat on my left. I was on the right. And we began talking. And then we began arguing. And this is basically what happened in the dream. We argued. And what did we argue over? We argued about duality. We argued about yin and yang and positive and negative and masculine and feminine. And I kept saying to him, no, it's not about males and females. It's about positive and negative energy. The good, bad, male, female thing is a human attribute that does not really relate to the true essence of it. And he kept saying, no, it's all lies. And I think he was really saying, no, it's all lies from the viewpoint that duality is a state and unity contains duality. So therefore this does not exist from what he, his perspective. So we had two different perspectives operating. And, um, you know, in, in the dream, I got out um, a tablet, a writing tablet, and I was drawing a circle and a square to illustrate, you know, um, positive and negative, um, whichever way they go around, attributes. And then, and the, you know, sitting under this tree in Bosnia at this conference, in two, after the conference in 2018, I got out my journal and I started drawing a circle and a square. And then I looked over this way, and then I saw that there was a river, a little island, and we were sat by it, under the tree. And that was the river. And I realized that in my dream, the way I entered this underground cave was via a river with a bend on it with a little island on the bend under the cave entrance was under a fallen tree. And that's where I was like, oh my God, <laughs> we're literally arguing what we argued in a past life dream from five years previous where we were initiated as priests in underground tunnels. And I don't know how many thousands of years that was ago. Um, but it was all very Freemasonry. And, you know, um, Madari states in the Bible, uh, the wisdom kept in the Bible and pyramids, um, that, you know, the original Freemasons were the Irish adepts, the Magi priests, and that modern Freemasonry has really sunk to a low of ignorance and power and control. So there is a differentiation. So if, you know, people get triggered by Freemasonry, I do. I've got Freemasonry in my family lineage and I have done Freemasonry frequencies to free myself of any curses that have happened because of this. 
which I must say, I'll just interject at this point, um, brought up five days of extreme anger. So there's definitely something to freeing yourself from Freemasonic curses of distorted teachings. Um, so that's one part of it. So what's the fall part of it? Because I keep mentioning this fall and my remembrance of what it all means in terms of this training, this training we're doing. So relating it back to the sacred secretion in past lives, in 2016, in my Vipassana number two, I didn't know it at the time, but I was actually on my sacred secretion time while I was in 10 days of silence in Vipassana. <laughs> um, and I think it really amplified my ability to um, access my past lives. And I remembered a bunch of them all at once. I remembered my Egyptian life. I remembered who I was, I guess, married to, who I've also met in this journey of life, who is written about in my books called The Lion Man. I remember uh, one of the lives was, um, there were four of us in a line and we were connected as a team and I was the only female at the front and I was wielding what I would call a vortex of light and it was kind of like a drill, it was a light drill and we were digging, digging is the wrong word, but we were molding the underground tunnels. And I remember it very vividly, but that's all I remember is this like being at the front, wielding this yellow and green kind of like a shamir worm kind of light source, uranium or something. I don't know what it was, but um, then I couldn't remember what happened. Just a flash of a memory. And then in, um, two years later, I met this person. And by that stage, I'd met all, all three. I've met them all. And then I had a healing done with my friend who's a psychic healer in 2018. And I said I had all of this energy stuck in my, my lower cauldron or my womb, my reproductive organs, my sexual energy center. And she asked me to go into it. She felt into it. She could see what I could not see. And she guided me through um, my body's remembering, my cellular memory, soul remembering process. And then um, she helped me remember. And what I remembered was that somehow we were all mind linked together. And we were driving this technology as a team. But I was, as the only female, for some reason I had to be at the front. And I had to direct the, um, the energy, possibly the energy of imagination. Because females, as according to Rudolf Steiner, have been gifted the power of the imagination. Whereas the men more are about the power of the will. So anyway... I remembered, I remembered, I remembered do doing the session with my friend and then suddenly I realized that for whatever reason we lost, we broke, something broke the link and then I lost control of this and it blew us up, something like that. And the amount of emotion that came out of my body in this remembering was bigger than I've ever felt anything in my entire life. It was the most grief I've ever, 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 ever felt. More grief than even when my mother passed away at a young age. Remembering all that and then coming back to this holistic teaching through the, the fall of the past lives. And as I began to read Elizabeth Haysh's, um initiation book, 
and about her fall from the higher energy centers to the lower energy centers, um, I began to wonder if this was the fall. And I remember my friend when she was helping me um, and we were doing this healing where I remembered um, and we were kind of laughing about it afterwards. <laughs> and she was like, because I've met all of these guys, right? And I've had very difficult experiences with them as teachings. Um, but she said, well, babe, no wonder they fucking hated you in this life. <laughs> and I do wonder as well, like, I still don't know, was I the one that lost the concentration or was it one of them? I don't know. I'm still analysing this and trying to re remember more m memories. Um, and so, you know, one little part of this Bosnian tale that I will tell you um, so I don't ruin my, my book that I'm almost finished with writing about the whole story of it all, is that um, we did have this kind of rise to a great height and then fall to a great low kind of theme happening between us that happened in a very strong energy field kind of way. And, um, you know, after this low feeling happened, and it was very sad, um, he took me to sit somewhere the day before I left and he made me walk up this really great hill and it was hot and I was tired and I didn't like walking up in the heat and then we got to this area at the top and we sat on this bench and we were actually in a graveyard 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 all around and then away over here in the distance was the pyramid of the sun the Great Pyramid of the Sun, and then all of this was obviously the Ravne tunnels, underground tunnels. And the emotion of it all was so somber and so sad, and I felt like this was a familiar goodbye. Like, he was, so I, I've been really pondering this the last couple of days as this kind of all kind of coagulates together in my experience of what it all means, of what we're actually trying to achieve. Was he showing me, because he could always see everything, this guy, he could see my past, present and future. He could even see the person I'd had a vision of in my first Vipassana, a person that didn't even appear in a physical body, he saw that person. Like, it's very amazing. But um, I do ponder, was he showing me the place that we died because of this? And was this the Ravne Tunnels? And that's why I was so attracted to go to Bosnia at that time because I'd already been given messages that I was going there before I even knew there was pyramids in Bosnia. I was already given this vision of this Bosnian shield. Um, it's got a yellow side and a blue side. And I was like, why am I seeing the antivirus symbol? This doesn't make sense. And then when I got there and I saw the shield painted on the wall, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've, been t I've, I've already been told. So what's the greater summary, context of it all? Was I here, just like an Elizabeth Heche was? She was at her peak, possibly. Possibly I was even beyond that, that position she got to because I was able to wield perhaps a technology akin to the Ark of the Covenant and then something happened between us that broke and we crashed as a team. And so, in this life, I have met them again. And they have taught me the most profound energy lessons that have all been, I would say, in a highly negative polarity, but energy lessons just the same. And now that they're all done, and I'm kind of understanding why life happened in that way is that, you know, her teacher in initiation says if you fail at any point to maintain your, um, your, your vibration, you will fall and all the lives that you saw in that sarcophagus as potential future lives, you'll need to act them out in the physical world. Sorry, my spelling. I'm hungry.
um, and so, you know, we did act these things out in the physical world, but we also acted them out in the dream world, where we were initiated as priests, and I was initiated as a priest then, because I just tried to do that and wake myself up. So I needed more help from my higher self, who wouldn't allow me to complete this. So you can see in this practice of the sacred secretion, how beautiful and holistic it is and how much we need to use everything that happens in our life as a resource. And this is what he would always tell me. He said, use all information as your resource. Never negate anything, never throw anything away, never write anything off, and try and use every single experience as a lesson on the path back to becoming this, becoming this initiate. And I really think that, you know, doing the sacred secretion is a part of getting back to that, but I don't think the sacred secretion is the be all and end all of it. And that's honestly where I've been at with it in terms of like, okay, I'm amplifying my creative sexual energy and I'm moving it upwards. And in that movement, moving upwards, there is an amplification process happening. But then what do I do with it? <laughs> right? And I think this is the really careful part. We have to be careful with where do we want to put that energy. Because, you know, in the last videos I've talked about Elizabeth Haish and the initiation, uh, she fell because the red man enticed her with sexual lower energy. And she crashed her own, her own nervous system through engaging in this um, energy. Um, these people in my life have been, you know, sexual partners where we, we went up to highs and crashed down again. Um, and then in my other experience with the, the friends and the emotions of it all, that's been another type of teaching of how to crash this energy that we build up. So in terms of a grand lesson, I think it's really the, the theme that we're coming into, or I'm coming into realizing what to do now, is where are you going to put that that energy and I have spoken about it in my online course as well about you know there's this three-part process because we've got these upper middle and lower cauldrons and this is the chi this is the shin this is the jing you know this is the the essence the reproductive energy this is the breath and the nutrients we put in and this is the heart the spirit consciousness and when we move the energy from the higher to the lower and then the lower to the higher, and then back into the center, we can start, you know, utilizing these three treasures as this holy trinity within and move these energies through our energy centers as, as an even balance. Um, because when that happens, I'll make another video about this, but you do when you do move your um, reproductive sexual creative energy to the higher centers and then into the heart, that is what I've come to know known as an experience as a full body bliss, as a state where it feels like uh, an orgasm, but it is happening continuously throughout the whole body, through every single cell. And so that's the potential of, you know, using this creative life force energy um, properly. You don't just put it down there, down there, you have to circulate it through everything. So anyway, I'll leave it there because these videos are just so much to digest. And um, you can see all the layering that has to happen with it. And I do encourage you to investigate your past lives in terms of your sacred secretion practice time. But I also warn that when you do open up your past life memories, um, because it is energy... If there's any energy that has been unresolved in that time, you can literally invite it back into your now life and these people will start turning up. And you may not be ready to deal with that in your life. Because as I've said, crashed my life, crashed my life, crashed my life. 
I recovered, but you know, it took me out of um, practicalities of life in, in, a, in a way for quite a long time. So that's the positive and negatives of the past life path is that, um, yeah, you have to be ready um, and expect that anything can happen. Your dream world, your past life world, your, your practice world, your meditation world, um, things that you hear in your music, things that you see on TV, things that people say, conferences that pop up, everything kind of connects itself together in the great weaving of showing you maybe there's a lot of us that did this. You know, there's a lot of us that didn't make it um, because as the consciousness of, you know, these Freemasons and the teachings became lowered and became this, the, you know, McDarry talks about it as, in his books that, or was it Elizabeth Hesh? Either book, this lower energy did end up infiltrating the priesthood and muddying the waters. I think it's in Heisha's book, actually. Um, so over time, this height has been lowered and it's also influenced the feedback loop and then maybe causes things like this to happen. Because upon my analysis, just one last thing, this person here, in the dream vision, this is a, a little lesson on how to use everything as your resource in terms of awareness. I could see him clearly. I could see him clearly. This one I could not see, see clearly ever. It, he had a feeling about him, but he never had a face. He was in shadow. And I do wonder in terms of, you know, there's a story of what happened to us in, in the now life, which was pretty shadowy. Um, but in terms of was he the one to cause this and I got the blame or I blame myself, whatever. They will blame me. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, you know, was he p perhaps one of these infiltrators? I don't know. I'm just really leaving it all open to contemplation at this stage. So anyway, that's the end of this, this series on this, I think, at this point. <laughs> um, and, yeah, if you're interested in uh, the online course, check it out on the Sacred Secretion on my website. Check out my books teaching about all of this kind of weaving in a practical way um, and subscribe to my channel, pass my, my stuff to other friends that you think may um, enjoy this work and um, thank you for subscribing as well. I've had a few more subscribers in the past few months which is great. So give me a thumbs up. I always hear people saying that and I'm like yeah but I won't. I'm going to start giving other people more thumbs up. Humans are so strange, aren't we? Anyway, lots of love to you. I hope that was um, interesting, and I'll see you on my next videos.